you to this evening's Bible study. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to request uh, same Ima, Ibabo to lead us in opening prayers. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for a time like this. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for this time of blessings and teachings. As we go into your words, Lord, speak to us and teach us what we need to know. Hasten those that are on their way, O oh God, Father, and let us learn at your feet this evening. In Jesus Christ's name I've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Amen. We are here to study. Uh, I want to welcome you once again. The topic of our discussion, which we started about five weeks ago, is little foxes that spoil the vine. Little foxes that spoil the vine. And our text of scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, as well as Songs of Solomon chapter 2, verses 15. We decided to take this uh, topic so that we can examine ourselves critically and individually. Examine ourselves critically. God, they may be he's talking about certain things that we do that we may not be conscious about. And uh, we may not know that those things are sinful. Uh, we take them for, for granted. And God is not happy about them. I was reading one of our devotionals I was reading uh, the author of Pastor E. Adeboye was talking about why some of us have not attained 
uh, or fulfill our purpose in life is because of those little foxes that are still in, in our life, those little sins that are in our lives. That's, that is why we are not able to be where God wants us to be. Praise the Lord. Uh, no one is perfect. I'm not perfect. We are all pressing to perfection. We are learning. Uh, we we have we are at this the we, we, uh, fifth topic subtopic we are learning. We studied murmuring and among Christians, murmuring a lot of us complain a lot. We complain a, a lot about everything. You complain about your age. You complain about your height, your color, your money, your parents, your background. You complain about everything. Murmuring is not acceptable in God's program. Amen. And it is a heart that is not grateful that murmurs. The children of Israel on their way from uh, Egypt, from bondage, after all they suffered in the hands of Pharaoh, after all the miracles they uh, God walked in their side by dividing the Red Sea, by giving them food, manna from heaven, when they, 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 they started thinking about eating garlic, onion, cucumber, and, and started complaining, say, where are all those? And when there was no water, they started complaining, Moses, why did you bring us out of bondage, out of slavery to this place to die and for our cattle and children to die? Praise the Lord. And God was not happy with that kind of memory. And God said, what I have heard you say with your mouth is what I'm going to do to you. For that reason, the, the, the children, the people that were uh, 20 years and above, they all died in the wilderness. None of them reached the promised land because of murmuring and complaining. So please let us learn to be grateful to God for what he has done for us and let us learn not to uh, murmur and complain. We talked about keeping malice and grudges, malice. Keeping malice and grudges. You are angry about somebody. The, the worst of all is that some of us have in inherited enmity. What do I mean? The man that was not happy uh, with your grandfather or with your father you ha has become your own enemy. You really didn't know what happened between him and your father. Even if you knew what happened, because of that, you, you, you are not in enmity with that person. It is not good. Don't inherit enmity. No. Uh, maybe two of my friends are quarreling. I take side with one. Instead of settling there, I take side with one and I begin to keep enmity with the other one. I just listened to one of our veteran in the Nollywood film industry said, don't join another uh, in another person's uh, uh, quarrel because you might be, uh, be in enmity with your helper. You don't know who is going to help you. So uh, let us not uh, keep malice and grudges. The Bible says, as long as it is within your power, forgive. It might be difficult. Nobody says you, 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 you should not remember. You, you, you're permitted to remember, but you're not permitted to react to, to it. So let us not keep grudges. Last week, we discussed lateness and ascentism. Lateness. Uh, a lot of us are not punctual. I gave an example of uh, some brethren that are regular but not punctual. There are some that are regular and punctual. There are some that are not regular at all. So please be that person that is punctual to everything that you do. Time is money. Time, once you waste your time, you will not be able to recover it. You have to work extra to be able to uh, recover it. So don't waste your time and don't allow people to waste your time for you too. There are time wasters and time killers. They just come to you when you're supposed to be busy and they begin to talk and all that. In these days also, we have our cell phones, which also can contribute to our wasting our time. We spend much time on social media, reading other people's comments, commenting, and all that, all that. And the Bible says that our interaction should be, should be to edify. Your comments should edify the, your readers. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let us be mindful about time. 
we did say that if 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 we say our meeting is starting at eight o'clock in the morning or in the evening or whatever time we have agreed as a body, at that time God takes His chair to sit down waiting for us, and it is not proper for us to keep God waiting. Just as we know that it is not proper for us to keep our CEO, our directors, and our supervisors waiting at the meeting. We should be there before the time and or, or time so that we don't keep our supervisors or the other person waiting. So we discuss uh, time. Redeem me the time. Talk about redeem me the time because the days are evil. So please let us learn to redeem the time. Do what you have to do on time. It's better to be early than to, uh, to be late. Uh, some people come late to programs and they will give reasons. Instead of accepting their fault that I am late, I'm sorry, they'll give reasons and say it's traffic. I was reading another devotion I said, don't give excuses, no more excuses. Don't give, if you are late, just accept I'm late and apologize, end of story. If you are saying it's traffic, you should have researched the traffic situation and build it into your time. So no room for excuses, praise the Lord. So set a time, I mean, set time aside for various activities. Amen. It's better to start on time than to uh, not to start at all. Again, when you discover that you have, you have missed the time, make effort to redeem it. Make effort to redeem it. Praise the Lord. That's, that's in a nutshell is what we have discussed in this uh, past few weeks. See, if you know you don't, if you don't know, know it now that you have missed a lot of blessings you ought to receive uh, when you get late to fellowship or you get late to Bible studies and all that. So let us take the work of God more seriously. As long as, so, uh, again, our attitude towards other people's business into our jobs, we cannot also bring it to the church. It's not good. And also some of us take the, the, our secular jobs, our professional jobs more important than that of the church. We give example as if you are going late to work, you're gonna call your supervisor to say, I'm running late or I'm not coming today or this happened. But if you are not coming to church, nobody cares to tell the pastor, you are not coming to church and why you are not coming and why you'll be coming late. So please let us not, uh, have no challenge attitude towards the work of God. God loves us. God is concerned about us. So let us be concerned about him. We should see the church as our personal business, as our own and not that of the pastor because the pastor is going to give his own account and you are going to give your own account. Don't be uh, that member that makes leadership difficult for the pastor or for the leader of the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any questions or contributions from what we have learned so far before we continue from where we uh, to this discussion? Any questions? Have you from what we discussed last week about timeliness? Did they, uh, does anybody want to share with us what he or she has gained from the discussion? <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, yes. I like to share something. Yes, please. God bless you, Tony. Yeah, uh, I I kind of got perspective on how like you you really like broaden my understanding when it comes to time and sometimes how we don't really look at um, how how we use our time when it comes to the church and we don't sometimes take it seriously. Like you use the the analogy of um when you want to meet a president or a ceo or an important boss you're not going to be late but when it comes to church we sometimes we sometimes are negligent or we we settle right and we're we're in turn um whether directly or indirectly making god waiting so i really like the analogy that you made with the president and the ceo it, it really uh brought in my understanding so that's what i learned from it thank you so much and God bless you. 
So what he's saying is that, just like we said last week, uh, I'm not going to keep my bishop waiting. I'm not going to keep the president of my company waiting. Uh, I want to be there on time and make him feel that I'm a responsible worker. But when it comes to the church, we don't take uh, treaty with so much seriousness. Please let us desist from it. That is one of the little forces that spread a vine. Uh, I shared with us last week that a preacher said, whether it may be from Revelation or, what, or not, that at the beginning of the service, if we say service is starting at 8 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, an angel comes to take attendance. And at offering time, he takes attendance. And at closing time, the angel also takes attendance. So you might come late. As far as the records of heaven are con is concerned that day, you were not present in the church. Then uh, you give your offering grudgingly, angry. Then it's not acceptable by God. Then it's just not uh, recorded for you. Then you again hurry out of the church. It means for that day, the blessings for beginners, offering, and uh, closing benediction, you're not part of it. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name so that we can be uh, up and doing and take the work of God seriously as we take our businesses and our schools seriously. No one likes to go late to the exam hall. So let us not come late to church or church activities. Are we happy? Okay. Today we are on page two of six. Page two, we are studying item four, slothfulness, and laziness, slothfulness and laziness. So many of us are very lazy, especially when it comes to the things of God as regard Bible studies, prayers, etc. Amen. Etc. could mean uh, reading your personal Bible, personal Bible study, reading Christian novels, and uh, listening to God. A lot of us are very lazy. I happen to be an example. I took a book to the office today with the intention was that at my spare time, I will read it, but I didn't read it. Not because I didn't have the time as it were, but because I was lazy. So please let us not be lazy in, the, in doing the things of God. Let us not be lazy in doing the things of God. Laziness is not good. It, just as it applies to the work of God, that is how it also applies to our secular life. Your business, if you are lazy in your business, your business will grow. If you are lazy about your studies, your as a student, you won't earn good grades. So let us learn to be hard working. Hard work does not pay, but laziness destroys. Amen. Hard work does not kill, sorry. Hard work does not kill. Hard work pays, but laziness destroys. So please let us be hardworking. Can we look at Judges chapter 18 verses? Uh, Sister Mambo, can you look at, open for all Judges 18 verse 9? Anthony, can you look at Proverbs 15, 19? As well as Proverbs 1915, and then uh, Iqbal can you look at Proverbs 21, 24 to 25? Praise the Lord. Judges 18, 19, I read. And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? That's the end of Judges. Judges. That's Judges 18, 19. Sorry, Judges 18, 9, not 19, sorry. Okay, Judges 18, 9. And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them. 
for we have seen the land, mm. and behold, it is very good. Amen. And are ye, and are ye still be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. It's Judges 18, 9. They say, arise, let us go immediately. There is no need for delay. Let us go immediately. Let's do the work. Let's do the work of evangelism. Let's not look at the, the, the rain. Oh, the, the weather. Oh, it's snowing. Or it's too hot or it's too cold. No, let us arise and go immediately and possess the land. Let's have that attitude towards the work of God and your personal work as well. Because if you are lazy at your personal work, you will also bring that attitude to the work of God. Don't postpone what can be done today to tomorrow. But I prefer that you finish your assignment well ahead of time and have the, have the time to review before submission. Prepare for Bible study. The scripts are given to us so that we can read in advance and be able to make contributions. He said, uh, nine. He said, arise and let us go against them. For we have seen the land and behold, it is very good. And they will do nothing. Praise the Lord. Say, do not say, do not be slow to go, to enter in and possess the land. Amen. Amen. Let us not be Amen. slow. Let us not be sluggish. Let us not postpone. Let us not procrastinate. You will do it. It's okay. I will do it. Let me, a little, Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber, poverty comes upon you and overtakes you. Amen. So whatever you set your heart and mind to do, do it with all amount of seriousness. Go for it. You want to start a business? Go for it. Research it and go for it. You want to start a school? Go for it. Whatever you want to do, you want to go to the church? Go for it. You want you have the mind to go for a personal evangelism? Go for it. You want to read? Do it. You want to pray? Don't say, let me sleep a little. From sleeping a little, you oversleep and you will not do your prayers again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any contributions to that passage? Okay, let's read see Proverbs 15, 19. Who is there? Anthony? Proverbs 15, 19. Yes, please. Proverbs 15, 19. Okay, Proverbs 15, 19. The way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns. But the way of the upright is a highway. Amen. See what the way of a slogger, a lazy man, is like the hedge of thorns. So the lazy man will never see any reason to do any work. He will give reason to why the work cannot be done. Not only is he not ready to do it, he's ready to discourage others from doing it. And please don't be lazy. And if you have a lazy person around you, please. Do away with such a person. Ignore the person. Don't allow him to drag you down. If you are not moving, allow me to move. Praise the Lord. Now, it is very uh, uh, discouraging when somebody who is, who is not fast walking, who does not walk fast, stays in your front. Or you are, maybe you are driving on the fast lane. There is this guy who is very sluggish. Instead of running 100, he's running 90 on the fast lane. He's going to waste your time and waste his own time. Pray not to have a lazy person in your front. Pray not to have a lazy person around you. And whatever you can do to encourage the lazy person, please do. But this most is very important that you don't allow the lazy person to slow you down. See, the way of the slogan is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a level way. Amen. So when you are upright, you, you, you make, your way will become very smooth and smoother than that or the other person because you are hardworking. Like I said, hard work does not kill, hard work pays. Amen. So please let us be hardworking, let us uh, not be lazy, and let us encourage others to be hardworking as well. Otherwise, don't allow them to pull you down. Mm -hmm. Show me your friend, I'll tell you whom you are. 
If you move with a lazy person, you will become lazy as well. Somebody that procrastinates, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow, oh, there is time. There, the time you think is there, is really not there. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, you may fall sick, or the person who is supposed to uh, help you or assist you may not be there at that time. Whereas if you made the move at the right time, you might get the help you need. Amen. Praise the Lord. There was this story of a, a lady. She came across her classmate, uh, her school mother. Her, the, 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 this other lady was her senior in, this, in the high school. And, uh, and this her senior had become the wife of the president. So they ran, she ran into the president's wife somewhere and, they, and people were surprised that the president recognized her, the hug and the, and the president said, the president's wife said, what can I do for you? What help? He said, ah, she was dead. I will, I will, I will think about it. She couldn't say, give me this now. I need this for him by business. And before you know it, the president was overthrown and uh, the, she did not, could not get, uh, uh, the woman could not give her the assistance she needed. Say it now. Do it now. Don't wait it tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late or tomorrow might not come. Amen. Praise the Lord. If there's somebody you want to help, help him now. Help her now. Don't say, I will help her tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come. Another issue may come, may, 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 may overtake the event tomorrow. And if there's something you need, ask now. Don't wait it tomorrow. I'm talking about spiritually and physically. Laziness does not help in, in, in any of these two places. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who is in um, Proverbs? Anthony, you are seeing Proverbs 19, 15. Proverbs 19, 15. Pro Proverbs 19, 15? Yeah, 19, 15. Okay. Um, Proverbs. Okay, Proverbs 19, 15. Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Slothfulness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. I hope this thing goes down into us, both in our physical and spiritual life. When you are lazy, when you are slothful, you'll be poor. And poverty is not good. When you are poor, you are not able to help yourself. You are not able to help another person. It's most miserable when you are not able to help yourself and there is a need for you. You see somebody that needs help because you don't have the resources, you are not able to help. So it, it affects you if it affects the other person. It affects the family. Please take note of that. If I were you, I would underline these things in my scripture, memorize them, and have them at my fingertip. That slothfulness casts a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. If there's anything I hate is hunger and poverty. Praise the Lord. When you are hungry, you cannot pray. When you are hungry, you cannot study. When you are hungry, you cannot do anything meaningful. And what brings hunger? Poverty. What brings poverty? Laziness. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Laziness in our spiritual lives, laziness in our physical lives, will put us uh, uh, into poverty and hunger. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's look at Proverbs 21, 24 to 25. Uh, who is there? IK. Uh, Proverbs 21, verse 24. Pride and haughty corner in his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Mm. Can you please take that again? 24. Pride and haughty corner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. His hand mm -hmm. refuses to labor. labor. And pride will also make someone not to walk. Scoffer is the name of the arrogant. 
arrogant, because it's he or she is arrogant, he's not ready to learn. He's not humble to ask questions. And what, ha what happened was the result of that poverty. And the desire of the sluggard kills him because he's hungry, because he's poor, because he's not able to provide for himself, support himself, he's always angry. Angry at everybody around, angry with the country, angry with the economy, angry with the government. And because of arrogancy, he's not able to know how he or she has contributed to his predicament. The Lord help us in Jesus' name so that we can become strong and do the work we are supposed to do. Amen. Uh, I can you please see help us with Proverbs 24, 30 to 32. Proverbs 24, 30 to 32. Proverbs 24, 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over the thorns, and nestles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. 32. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Amen. You see, I passed by the feed of a lazy man, passed by the farm of a lazy man, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. And behold, it is all overgrown with tongues. Amen. I used to say that they that abandon their farms shall reap weeds. Amen. So that, that is what happens to the farm of a lazy man. Why, is he, why does his farm or his business goes like that, turns out to be poor, uh, bad is because of laziness. He wouldn't wake up on time to go to work. He wouldn't wake up on time to go to the farm. He would not do the research to know the right fertilizer to apply to the crop, to know the right crop when to plant. And at the end, when somebody passes through your compound, through your farm, through your compound, what does he see? The compound is kept on, on camp. It's laziness. I will shoot tomorrow. I will clear the lawn tomorrow. I'll clear next tomorrow. At the end of the day, you end up not clearing it. I pass by the feed of the slogan, by the fire of a, 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 of, of a man lacking sense. And behold, it was overgrown with tongues. And grounds are covered with nesto. And its stones were are broken down. The Lord help us in Jesus' name to, uh, not to be lazy to be able to do our work well uh, so that we will have results and testimonies. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we're going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Uh, Haja, can you help us with Ecclesiastes 10, 18? I'm so sorry. I don't really have the same Bible, and I'm just with Jojo too, so I won't be able to. I'll just no listen. problem. Uh, Anthony, can you help us with that? You said Ecclesiastes ten eighteen. Ecclesiastes ten eighteen. Okay. Ecclesiastes ten eighteen. Okay. Almost there. I know. I trust you. You get it. So. Oh, I'm there. 1018, right? Exactly 1018. Because of the laziness, because of the laziness, the building decays, and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. Because of laziness, what happens? The building decays, and the house leaks. Man, I hope this things will help us in our individual lives, spiritually and physically. Let's, we must pray. 
against laziness and we must walk against laziness. Last week, we're talking about uh, if you sleep and the bed does not want you to get up, leave the bed and get up. Don't sleep too comfortably. Don't sleep too comfortably. If you do, you will sleep off. Be agile. Be ready to walk. Say, judge, say, let us go straight away and do the work. If you have that mindset that I want to finish this work at this time, set a target for yourself. Set a reasonable target for yourself. Say, if you aim at the treetop, you may not leave the ground. If you aim at the sky, you may reach the treetop. So if you're going to take an exam, there's one of my friends or uh, one preacher I met some time ago. He said, at the beginning of the semester, he brings out his uh, uh, course. He, the courses he's going to take, I say, in this course, I'm, I want to make a year. I want, in this course, I have five. In this semester, I have five courses to take. I want to make four A's. That's his target from the beginning of the semester. And he pursues it. So at the end of the semester, he's able to say, yes, I made four A's and one B. Set target for yourself. So when he says, if you aim at the three tops, okay, uh, I'll make it. 50 is the pass mark. 50, uh, I'll make it. You are just aiming at the three top. You may not leave the ground. But if you have the mind of making 80, 90, and you eventually make 70, you'll still be comfortable. Praise the Lord. So aim at the tree top. Aim at the tree top. Proverbs. If, if aim, sorry, aim at the sky. If you aim at the sky, you reach the tree top. And as Christians, we aim at heaven. We want to make heaven. We don't just want to be satisfied with miracles on earth here, miracles of prosperity. The unbelievers prosper. So if you are a believer, you are prospering. Uh, John Believer is prospering and you are not targeting heaven, what is the difference? And what will make you make heaven is when you target heaven. Somebody said, the preacher said, if you are not thinking about heaven, you might not make it. Praise the Lord. So think about heaven. How can I make heaven? What am I supposed to do? What does the scripture expect me to do to be able to make heaven? When you have these things at the back of your mind, you are thinking about it, then you are preparing that he who does not prepare for success is preparing for failure without knowing. Again, he who does not prepare for success is preparing for failure without knowing. Praise the Lord. So prepare for success so that you succeed. Prepare for heaven so that you make it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10? Any questions or contributions so far before we continue? Any questions or contributions? Is there anything that's, that's yeah. out to you from this discussion? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say something. All right, brother. Bless you. Okay. There was, there was one time. Okay, uh, a lot of times uh, I'm a construction laborer, and a lot of times, uh, like the uh, we're paired with another another guy, and there's been there's been times when uh, like the, I haven't worked with a guy that's uh, like I, I've been working with a guy that's lazy. Okay, it's just like I just sort of sort of have to push him aside, just say, can I get another uh, work with somebody else? Because I'm always if that happens, you always and you're behind in the work that you uh, you know the, that you're given. Like you always, uh, like you're painted with the same brush, you know, it's just like, uh, just, you look bad as well. Yeah, I agree with, I agree with you. If you have a lazy partner, your work would not be effective. If you have a exactly. lazy partner, your work would not be effective. So also when you are put in a group for, for a project work in the school and uh, you're, you don't have a, a, a hardworking partners or all the, all the members of your team are not hardworking. At the end of the day, the job is left for one or two persons, and the result is usually not pleasant. So let us not be that lazy member of the group. Let us show, uh, 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 let us be good examples to our colleagues and our partners at work. 
The Bible says that, that we are the light of the world and salt to the earth. So the way we do our work, we show whom we are, whether we are actually light or darkness, or whether we are salt, whether our salt is still effective. And the Bible says that if you're any salt, a salt that loses its taste, it's not good for anything, it's thrown away under the foot of men. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So Amen. when you are when you are a member of the team, be an effective team player. Contribute to it. Don't create problems for the other uh, team members. Don't create problems. Don't make yourself ungovernable. There's this saying that he that cannot uh, be led cannot lead. If you don't cooperate with your leaders, you don't respect them, you don't do what they ask you to do, when you are put in position of leadership, you will also not be able to do it. So we, we learn leadership from involvement and from serving. Praise the Lord. Are we happy? Okay, any contributions or questions? Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's look at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. 2 Thessalonians, are you there? Chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians 3, 10. chapter 3, verse 10, I read. Yes. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not walk, neither should he eat. Mm. Mm. Uh, before we come to that, Aja, you raise your hand. Can you say something? Um, I I really like um hearing this word. I feel like it's really speaking to me and my 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 walk with God. I don't really like. I'm sometimes I'm so lazy to get up and pray. When I pray, I just say a short prayer, and um, you know, I take other like for example, my work. I'm more I'm more better with my work. I'm more punctual. So my question is, like, um, you were saying that sometimes it's just good to just do it. It's better not to do it, not to do it. But how can you defeat that? Okay. Thank you very much. As if, if, if you are said that you are wrong, it means you are ready to take correction. So I'm happy that you have known your weaknesses. So you have to work against it. Why are you not able to achieve your target? Is it you are not you are, you are sleeping too much? You are not taking it seriously. There's this topic that says, "Man, know thyself." If it is regarding your studies, know when you are when you are strong, and know when you are when you are tired, and know when you are strong. Don't start to pray when you are already feeling sleepy. Uh, there's this pastor, pastor, pastor. He had he said when he's he's if he is, he's praying and he's feeling sleepy. He does not just kneel down and start to pray. He start to walk on the steps, on the staircase. Start to walk up and down so that he does not fall asleep. So do something that will make you uh, not to fall asleep during prayers. Then set a target. If you set a target for yourself, you will be able to meet it. I tell my, as, when, as a student, I tell myself that if I'm able to read my notes, my lecture notes three times before the exam, I am fully covered. So know your strength and your weaknesses and start to do the work on time. Any contributions to that, how to overcome laziness? Yes, if I want to say something. If I want to say your hand is up, say something. Uh, praise God. Amen. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not too different from what you said. I'm just going to say it in another words. Uh, the devil is very tricky, you know, so always find a way to trick him too. Mm -hmm. So if you, for example, you know, you fall asleep, you know, it, it's not, you can, you can pray kind of, uh, uh, a little bit uh, earlier. So let's say, you know, you usually will start to pray like, you know, maybe for example, like 10 o'clock, you know, you can, you can pray very early. You know, you pray, pray like eight o'clock, like when you still, you know, have that uh, strength. It happens to me a lot and it doesn't fail. 
when I say I want to pray like late at certain time, the devil knows he uses it against me. So I'll say, for example, I'll say, uh, uh, let me just kind of study. And before, you know, I pray later, when is that time? Let's say 11, I start feeling sleepy. So what happened is, so when it's early, you know, the, my instinct, the Holy Spirit start telling in my heart, when it's like very early, like seven, eight, that I should pray. And believe me, <laughs> oftentimes that not, most of the times, when it gets late, I start feeling sleepy. And in my heart, I'm very happy that, oh, I listened, uh, I listened to, my, to my heart when it was telling me to pray. And when I don't listen, I always end up not, it is either I don't pray the way I would like to pray. It's very brief because I start to be sleepy. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. So they say you rush when you are late. Say so you rush when you are late. So if you start on time, you will not have the need to rush. So start to study on time, start to pray on time, start to cook on time, start to do everything you have to do. Set a target for yourself. This is what the, the, a to do a to do list, right? There's a to do list. This is what I want to do today. Today I want to cook. I want to uh, go to work. I want to do this. I want to do that. And start it on time. Have it at the back of your mind. When I returned from work today, I was very tired. But because uh, ordinarily I would have slept by now, because of how tired I was. But because of my commitment to these studies. I decided to discipline myself to stay awake and thank God I'm active now. Amen. So set a target for yourself. Set priorities. This is what I want to do. Have your, uh, know what is priority to you. Amen. I was sharing with somebody in the morning, some people, some, some of our friends and brethren in, uh, back home say they don't have money to research into uh, some important issues, but they have the same uh, uh, resources to go into Facebook, WhatsApp, and begin to chat and attack each other. No, prioritize your needs. Amen. So if you prioritize your need, set targets for yourself, then you will be able to achieve it. Are you happy? Ajari, we answer your question. Yes, thank you all for your um, advice. I really appreciate it. God bless. You may need an accountability partner, somebody to push you to do your work. From the beginning, you may need somebody to push you to do your work. If you need a, a guide on how to set your targets, let's have a private chat and talk so that we can um, guide you on how to set targets. Um, if you have to take a course in it, uh, to, how to draw up your to-do to list, then we can have such discussion so that you are able to meet targets. It is very, very important that you meet targets. And you set reasonable targets for yourself. Like we said, if you aim at the treetop, you will not leave the ground. But if you aim at the sky, you will reach the treetop. And at the treetop may be a comfortable place for you. And we said as Christians, we are not just aiming at the sky, we are aiming at heaven. So think success, project success. When you think success, you will succeed. Remove fear from your life. Some people are so afraid or this, this, this happened, that, that, that happened. No, they kind of exaggerate the problems more than the power of God. We are Christians. We have the power of God. For instance, in your studies, the Bible says, he that lacks wisdom, let him pray. So if at the back of my uh, note, my size book, when I, I write, have you prayed? So before I begin to read, as I open the, my note, the back is written, have you prayed? So before I begin to read the, my note, I, I pray, Lord, give me wisdom. Every day. As long as that inscription is written on my note, I don't forget to pray before I start to read. And God has helped me all through my uh, school days. Praise the Lord. Uh, this Second Thessalonians chapter, where was it? Chapter 3, verse 10, he said, He who does not walk should not eat. Praise the Lord. And he said, While we were with you, we walked. Paul was writing to the brethren to say, While we were with you, we walked. We're not lazy. We provided for ourselves. We didn't, they, 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 as, as the pastor of the church, 
he didn't depend on the offering and on the tithe. He had his own business. Paul was a, a, a tent a maker. He made tents to raise money for, his, for himself and for the ministry. But this day we find a lot of uh, pastors who are full-time uh, in the ministry. And uh, because the resources are scarce uh, or few, they begin to cajole people to sow seeds, seed for to pass exam, seed to have to get married, seed to have children. It ought not to be so. It ought not to be so. Paul said, he who does not walk should not eat. For uh, even when we were with you, we would give uh, we will give you this command. If if anyone is not willing to walk, let him not eat. Amen. So don't encourage the lazy person and do not be lazy. My primary focus today is to make sure that you as members of this ministry and those that are interested in what we are doing are not lazy. Be hardworking. Hard work does not kill. Hard work pays. I shared with you a story of a man who said, I hate poverty, so I walk. Laziness will prevent you from walking. Laziness will make you poor and will make you not to get to where you are supposed to get to. So the earlier you begin to learn it now, the better for you so that you will have enough for yourself, you have enough for the family, you have enough for, your, for the ministry, for the church, and you have the, enough to help the needy, the less privileged. Amen. Amen. There are some people that are handicapped that de definitely cannot walk. Yes, those are the needy that we should help and should uh, uh, support, not do those that are lazy and are not prepared to walk. Say, so he who does not walk should not eat. Praise the Lord. Any questions or contributions? Well, I have a quick contribution. Yes, please. I was thinking about what um, Sister Haja was saying. And I think also what you could do to basically just fight the spirit of laziness is to really think about your why. Why are you doing the things that you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scriptures do say, in the Bible it does say, without a vision, men perish, right? So when you don't have a vision, you, you perish. Mm. So I think it's about finding your what, why, why you're doing this. What are you trying to accomplish? What is your purpose? And when you find your why, that's what will push you even in your tough days to keep going. Awesome. So yeah. So Thank I, you I, so I, much. That's a wonderful contribution. Find out why mm -hmm. you should do what you, should, you, should, you, you, you are doing. Mm -hmm. Why? If you know the why, it will be a sufficient motivation. Why should I study? If I don't study, I won't be able to teach you. If I don't teach you, I'll waste my time and waste your time. So I must study to prepare so that when I come before you, I'm able to teach you. I must study so that I will not be cast out after teaching others. Amen. So I set that target for myself to be prepared always so that when you ask me questions, I'm able to give you correct answers based on scriptures. Amen. So you are a student. Why should I study hard now so that I won't be poor tomorrow, so that I can help myself and help my family tomorrow and support the work of the ministry? Praise the Lord. And you know what laziness does? You know that a little sleep, a little slumber, poverty comes upon you and overtake you. You say, I passed through the farm of a lazy man and it was overgrown with weeds. No, I don't want to be described as such. So I must walk so that my farm is not overgrown with weeds. Are we happy? So please take notes. Yeah. Uh, Imabo, you have, you have something to say? Oh, no, no. Okay. Carry on. OK, thank you. He said, laziness has no place in the character of a follower of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, I walk as my father is walking. Amen. Don't leave what can be done for tomorrow. It's, it's not the character of Christ and follower. True, when we're talking about follower of Christ, we're talking about true followers of Christ. Not those that are following Christ because of miracles, signs and wonders, but those that are following him because they love him 
and they have passion for the work of God. Laziness should not be our part. Like judges said, let us go straight away to do the work. Let us go straight away. No, don't waste time. If you are working in a team, you have all agreed that this is the time for us to go. And at the time, that time, the other person is not ready. Don't let him or her delay you. Go and do your, because you will be accountable for your work and I will be accountable for my work. I like the sharing of Anthony, the why. Why am I doing this? So set a target for yourself. I want to do this so that I have this advantage in, in, in my life. Okay? Are we happy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have attached, as you see appendix B, by Bob Rossi to, for more discussions on laziness. Let's turn to page six or so, and let's discuss this. Uh, page six. What is my appendix? Okay, page six. That should be the appendix. Uh, sorry, page page four. Page four. What time is it now? Okay. Let's look at appendix one on page four. This was a a, a document prepared by. Bob Russell, he said, years ago, I heard Charles Swindle preach a sermon on the characteristics of a lazy man from the book of Proverbs. I took notes and occasionally used and expanded on those principles. I have reworked them to the point I can't remember which ones originated with him, probably the most. The following characteristics help distinguish between appropriate ambition and downright laziness. So, page five, warning to young adults. Are we there? Yes. These characteristics are a warning to young adults. Many have been overprotected and are unfamiliar with hard work. Young women, if the guy you are dating has half these phobias, don't marry him. He will keep you on the edge of bankruptcy. Praise the Lord. This is a straight warning to our young ones. Young women especially say, if the guy you are dating has this characteristic, he has a lazy attitude, don't marry him because he's going to put you at the edge of bankruptcy. Praise the Lord. Same goes for the uh, young man also. If the lady is lazy, has no challenge at it to walk, then be careful. You are heading for trouble. Amen. One, he can't, he, one, he can't get started in the morning. Laziness brings on deep sleep. Proverbs 19, 15. Hmm. Proverbs 19.15. Are we there? I want to rush this again so that we can um, have a good knowledge of it so that you'll be more prepared for both your spiritual, secular, and married life in the future. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 19.15. Proverbs 19.15. The guy that does not get, get up early in the morning to walk, be careful of him. Make it walk. Proverbs 19.15. We, we read it before. Uh, mm -hmm. so that, Cast it into a deep sleep. Yeah. And the like this soul shall suffer hunger. Good. We read that before. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is idle, we suffer hunger. Hunger is not good at all. It's not good to be hungry. Amen. Especially when you could have, uh, you had opportunity of any 
good money or able to take care of yourself. But out of laziness and carelessness, you find yourself at the opposite side, at the begging side. A preacher said, they said all, all fingers are not equal. I said, yes, I agree all fingers are not equal. Why must you be the smallest finger? I, you forbid to be the strongest finger to support the others. They have to take the excuse. Hey, well, we all cannot be professors. I agree. But must you be a, a, a dropout? Mm -hmm. No. Praise the Lord. The sluggard loves the snow button of uh love the snow button of the alarm. He just can't back himself out of back himself out in the morning. In college, he often misses the first hour class. On the job, he's always late for early appointments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This warning is to young ladies and also to young men. First early morning lecture, he misses it or she misses it because he's not ready to get up. The alarm rings. Instead of getting up with the alarm, he's off the alarm and said, ah, let me rest a little bit. And then he ends up missing his first lecture and missing his appointment. Praise the Lord. Number two, he suddenly finishes anything. The lazy man does not, uh, does not roast his game. He is, but the diligent man prizes his possessions. Praise the Lord. He starts something, he does not finish it. We are discussing the characteristics of a lazy person. He starts mm -hmm. this, not able to finish it. He starts that, not able to finish it. He turns to this, not able to finish it. Why? It's all because the person is lazy. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. Somebody there? Proverbs 12, 27. Hmm. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. The substance of a diligent man is precious. precious. The possession of a diligent man is precious. Uh, he, he gets what he wants. Somebody said, if you don't work hard, you will not get what you want, you get what you are given. Do you get that? If you don't work mm -hmm. hard now, you will not get what you want, you get what you are given. You just have to accept it because mm -hmm. that is what somebody is able to give to you. And we have to overcome it right now as young people. Overcome it physically and spiritually so that you don't be a beggar and don't be constitute nuisance to other people. Praise the Lord. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, the lazy man likes his heart. That is the fun part. But cleaning his game, building a fire, and roasting the meat is tedious. He starts a lot of worthy projects, but sudden finishes. That's the man. When, he is, is, when you say, let's, let's cook, he's not prepared to cook, but he likes the food. Mm -hmm. That is a characteristic of a lazy man. He, when, he, when you say, let's set the fire to roast the meat, to do that, let's do the camp tent. He's not available, he's not ready. But once the camp tent is built, once the field is set, he's ready to play. Such a person is lazy run away from such a person because they say, show me your friends, I'll tell you whom you are. And the preacher said, you are the average of the five people you move with. You are the average of the five people you move with. So check the, 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 your, 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 your so-called best friend, the five of them, what have they become, what are they? If they are in the average of 50s, you are also in the 50s. If they're in the average of 80s, you are there. You are the average of the first five people you move with and you call your friends. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Three, he's full of excuses. The slogan, the Proverbs chapter 22, verse 13. Proverbs 22, 
13. The sluggard, the lazy man is full of excuses. He gives reasons why he cannot succeed. Why others are better than him. Why, why others, uh, I mean, he, he gives reasons. He argues. The slogan says, there's a lion outside. I shall be killed in the street. Praise the Lord. Proverbs mm -hmm. 22, 13. Mm -hmm. He's afraid. Oh, the, ah, the sky is getting dark. It's, it's likely going to rain. So, do you are you are you carrying salt? It's only salt that melts the rain. So, whatever we, if you have this characteristic, please begin to pray for God to help you to overcome because they destroy. He said, "There's a lion on the way. I cannot go out. I'll be killed." The work is too tedious. Is giving excuses. Oh, fasting again. They have declared fasting. Why fasting at this time? For instance, we have changed our service time from 10 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I want to encourage us to, to keep to it. After all, we all go to work by 8 o'clock. We go to school by 8 o'clock. Why can't we come to the house of God by 8? Wake up early. A little sleep, a little slumber, poverty comes upon you. Don't give excuses. A, a, preacher, a preacher said, you give excuses for what you don't, you didn't intend to do. It's what you did not intend to do that you give excuses about. So have good intention. Set targets for yourself. When you have targets for yourself, you have good intentions, you'll be able to achieve them. Praise the Lord. The slogan is afraid even before he starts. Oh, they say this exam is difficult. This course is difficult. Before he starts, he's afraid. And once you go into the hall or go into a program or a project with fear, you are bound to fail. Say, so did I not say it before? You said it because you were lazy, not because it is true that nobody succeeds in that program. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's full of excuses. Likewise, the lazy individual will, will more things like, uh, it is a jungle out there. I had to quit. My nerves were short. It's Friday. No one works on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You give excuses. It's Friday, as if Monday will not come. Don't leave what can be done on Friday till Monday, because something can happen on Monday that will make you not to be able to do the work and submit. That you don't go to school on Saturday does not mean that Saturday is a free day. Walk and pray. Praise the Lord. We have 15 minutes more. Any questions or contribution? Contribution, please. Yes, please. Uh, the number one uh, aspect that he can't get started in the morning. Mm. It applies to every one of us, not only the young ones. Because, uh, because as a parent, a father or a mother, if you know that maybe your children wakes up at 6.30, you get them ready for school and all that, from there you go to work. You should know that maybe at 5.30 or a few minutes to 6.00, you should target yourself, train yourself to eat that I must wake up at this time before the children wake up. That's to true. pray, to read the word of God, to meditate and do all that. But if you are the lazy type, you will look at the, oh, it's 5.30, let me sleep small. Time never reach. You end up not praying that day before you leave the house. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just say your prayer uh, shabbily like that and eh? God lead us so you just run away like that. Mm -hmm. But if you train yourself and remove that laziness, say by 5.30 or 20 to 6, I must have to wake up and pray, do my own personal prayers and read and all that. Before the children wake up by 6.30, you begin the day like that. So it also applies to us, even as adults or as uh, we are getting older. It's a good, it's a good thing. Mm. It's a good thing, yeah. Thank you very much. It's a good thing. You have said yeah. that it's not only for the young ones, for both uh, old and young. Uh, yes. 
you, you, you should live by example. As parents, let us live by example. If you say, yeah. uh, uh, I, I am not able to wake up at six o'clock, but I expect my child to wake up at six o'clock, then it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So let us all learn from this, this, uh, these teachings. It, it, it costs across. You, so you should know where your weaknesses are and find out how to overcome it. In fact, this paper also tells us how to overcome, how to overcome these things. It is the why, why am I doing this thing? Why must I wake up by five o'clock? I have to wake up by five o'clock to pray before my phone start ringing. Once my phones are ringing, I will be distracted. So I should wake up before my friends that will call me. I should read before I uh, finish my prayers before they start calling me. Then if I have to drive my children to work at seven o'clock, I should be up earlier to prepare myself and prepare them so that they will not make me, I, they, they will not make me go late for my own appointment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Excuses, yeah. It's always given as Friday. Amen. Four, he seems to get a lot of bad breaks. The way of the sluggard is blocked with thorns, but the path of the righteous of the upright is a highway. We read that before, Proverbs 15, 19. Uh, he, he's always meeting uh, 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 block walls because of lack of adequate preparation. Because you don't prepare well, you don't have the right mindset, then you are not able to achieve what you love to achieve. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The lazy man has a victim's mentality. He has a victim's mentality. He, he feels defeated even before he starts. That's the attitude of a lazy man. Nothing seems to go right. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, the morning of the interview, my car wouldn't start, and I was late to uh, I was late for the appointment. I got caught <coughs> drinking just one beer on break. Everyone does it. I just got caught. Yes, <coughs> excuse me. Everyone does it. Everyone does it, but it's not everyone that gets caught. So you might be the unlucky one. Therefore, don't mm -hmm. tread that path at all. If you tread that path to say it's just a bottle of beer or it's just a little sleep, or it's just a little re relaxation, then you'll be caught in the web. So um, you're, you're, you're already defeated in your head. You're already defeated. You have that winner's mentality. And that you were defeated before does not mean you cannot win. A winner never quits and a quitter never wins. It is when you quit that you will never win. First principle to overcome repeated failure is to accept your fault. Is to find out why you failed and why you didn't achieve your purpose. And then ask questions, ask for support. There are people that have passed through the road before that will be able to help you and support you. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, everyone experiences a few bad uh, breaks in life, but the mm -hmm. lazy person brings it on himself and he yeah. never makes the connection between behavior mm -hmm. and consequences. Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Yes, we may have some misfortune. Uh, I drove speed this day, I was caught. Yes, but the lazy man, I wrote this exam, I didn't pass. Okay, I, 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 I failed some of my exams and I repeated and I passed, right? So I'm not saying I'm a genius, I never failed, I failed, some, I failed my driving test, I repeated and I passed. But the lazy man's own is continuous repetition. You fail today, you fail in this one. Instead of accepting your fault and correcting it, you jump to the other one. Because of the mentality of failure, you will fail again. So please, let's deal with that spirit of laziness. 
I'm going to draw the curtain at this point today uh, so that we don't exceed our time. Just as we say, start on time, finish on time. I'm going to draw the curtain at this point. We'll continue from here next week by God's grace if Christ does not come. We'll continue from where we stop. We stopped in item uh, four on page five. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're discussing the appendix six on laziness. So we'll continue from there next week. Five. Any questions or contributions before we, mm -hmm. we stop? Before we pray. My contribution is that uh, all of everyone is encouraged uh, to be hard working and to stay focused. In order not to be slothful, you must have a focus. So if you're, 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 you have a focus and a target to meet. So if you have a target, you will determine to work towards it. You will determine to work towards it and you, you follow your plan and pray towards it. You pray towards the plan that you have and you walk to it. Say, watch and pray. So as you are planning, you are watching, you are praying. Mm. In that way, nothing will be left on top. So I work on this side, prayer on this side. It's not, oh, I am praying, but you are not walking. You become like the lazy person because you are not walking towards what you want to have. So and if you are not walking towards what you have, want to have, you cannot achieve it. Prayer alone, he said, I, I walk as if prayers, prayers are not, are not answered, answered. And I pray. And I pray as if that is all I rely on. So as you are walking, you are also praying. And so you are marking, um, uh, you know, ticking your, your, your target points as you achieve them. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Amen. if as, as you are pursuing your goal, if there's anything that is is, uh, is on your way that will make you not achieve the goal. Get rid of such things because they will deter you from getting to your target. Set targets for yourself. We're going to pray. Before then, let's take announcement. Next week, at the same time, seven o'clock, we'll have a Bible study on Zoom. Uh, for those in this area, New Market, and it's environment, the GTA, our Sunday service will be at 8 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, at uh, the, the 461 Park Avenue in New Market, you know the address. Please, let's come on time. We have studied time, timeliness and we have studied laziness. Let's not have these things in our lives. Set your alarm clocks so that you are able to wake up on time and come for this program. Remember to pray for me always and I will be praying for you. Let us bow down our heads and pray. Ask God to remove the Ask God to help you to set your targets. Ask God to help you to know your weaknesses and ask God to remove the spirit of laziness from you. And if you need help, please call. Bow your heads, let us pray. Pray and ask God to help you. Father, help me to overcome my lazy attitude, my weaknesses. Father, we pray that you give us the grace to set our targets and to follow suit. Help us not to give excuses. Help us to arrange our time properly and to follow. Remove every distraction from our ways so that we are able to achieve our goals. In Jesus' name we pray. For that, I pray that you bless everyone that is under the auction of this teaching, that as hearers will be doers of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Preserve Amen. our lives and give us the grace to live a life that is holy and acceptable to you. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the grace Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Thank God bless you. you and good night. Amen. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.